So let's cut to the big question straight away. Does the brand new LG C3 offer enough performance upgrades to make it worth the extra price hike over the outgoing LG C2? No, it doesn't. Hello and welcome to another video on AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, the site editor, and I'm a fully trained and qualified ISF and THX calibrator with over 20 years of experience. In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new LG C3 OLED EVO TV. The LG C3 continues to be the sweet spot in the OLED lineup, offering a good mix of features and performance, but this year there's a much bigger gap between this TV and the flagship G3 model, which has the new MLA and Meta technologies for vastly increased brightness. The C3 in comparison doesn't really get any major boost in performance, and that's fine because LG is building more of a distinct performance jump between the models in the lineup this year. The C3 range includes 42, 48, 55, 65, 77 and 83 inch screen sizes and it should be noted that the 42 and 48 inch don't have the brightness boost processing but the processing is exactly the same in every other department. New this year is the Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor which adds some more image processing power on top of the excellent upscaling and motion performance we saw last year on the C2. It has the new advanced dynamic tone mapping algorithms that now assess 20,000 zones within the image compared to 5,000 in the C2. This further enhances the dynamic range and it tries to stay accurate to the creator's intent. The picture processing is claimed to perceptually make the C3 look much sharper, brighter and more colourful than the C2 using the same panel with better mid-range detail and high brightness colour reproduction. WebOS 23 adds a few updates over last year, with just two pages in use and new quick cards which pull together apps under the same subject matter such as work, games, music and so on. The top third of layer 1 is taken up by advertisements, which can be switched off deep within the menu system, but it still remains a huge waste of real estate. Another area where LG has excelled in recent years and continues to do great things is with gaming. The C3 is equipped with four full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 48 gigabits per second connections with support for HDR 4K 120, Nvidia G-Sync, AMD FreeSync Premium and VRR, as well as the game optimizer and dashboard which gives gamers complete control over their gaming experience with the C3. Plus, the input lag is an incredibly low 9.2 milliseconds with 4K60 signals, and you can half that again with a 120 signal. Essentially, the LG C3 is identical to the outgoing C2 with exactly the same stand, speakers, connections placement, and chassis design using composite materials, which does make it incredibly lightweight. We go into picture quality measurements in detail within the written review on AV forums, so head over to read all the details of the out-of-the-box and calibrated results there. We fully measured and tested the out-of-the-box settings as well as calibrating the C3 to put it through some rigorous testing, which include side-by-side -side comparisons with its closest rivals. If you want to know what the best settings are out-of-the-box, then you can also check out our settings video. In the Filmmaker HDR mode, we measured 816 nits on an industry standard 10% window and full 100% white at 159 nits on the C3. Last year's C2, which we tested in the same way, measured in at 743 nits on the 10% window and full screen it measured 150 nits. So there's no huge perceivable difference between the two models. With the extra processing on the C3, the only real difference as they both use the same panel. As we said many times, peak brightness is just one factor which makes up an HDR image and image processing and tone mapping are also very important factors to consider. The LG C3 is identical to the C2 when it comes to tone mapping to ST2084 PQ EOTF with slightly different maps for mastering difference between 1000 and 4000 nits. With 1000 nit master content, the tracking is accurate up to the standards to the peak brightness limit where the set then hard clips. 
With 4000 nit mastering metadata, the C3 also applies a slightly different map that rolls off more gently and tries to preserve peak details and seen APL as it does so. HDR wide colour gamut performance is also excellent to the DCI P3 spec within Rec 2020, and we measured 2020 coverage at 72% XY and 75% UV, with P3 coming in at 98% XY and 99% UV. Again, we go into the picture measurements and comparisons in much greater detail within the written review for those who like to nitpick through the data, so head over to AV Forums for that. In terms of picture quality, the LG C3 offers superb performance in almost all areas. Starting with screen uniformity when displaying a 5% brightness window, there were some faint vertical bands seen when viewing in a pitch black room, but this wasn't seen when viewing actual material in dark scenes within dark viewing conditions, so it's nothing to worry about. The C3 was also very clean at other brightness levels, with no signs of dirty screen effect or vignetting, and we saw no colour shift at all across the screen surface. Video processing on the C3 carries on from the C2 with superb upscaling of lower resolution content to the native resolution of this panel. There are no signs of edge enhancement or ringing to fine edges, and the detail retrieval is excellent with no visible artefacts present. The new Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor really does have the power to provide superb upscaling and other video processing tasks. Motion is also excellent with correct 5.5 pulldown applied to 24 frames per second material, so there's no induced judder and film content looks natural. 50Hz broadcast is also clean and has great motion with no signs of frame skipping or unwanted artefacts. Cinematic movement is a useful setting with any true motion menu if you suffer from the sample and hold 24 frames per second judder seen on OLED sets due to their instant pixel response time. This mode adds some light interpolation which combats that effect and it does so without adding in too much soap opera effect. We don't recommend using true motion any higher than cinematic movement. HDR10 and Dolby Vision content are also superb on the LG C3 in isolation and with out of the box black performance matching that of the C2 last year and the colour reproduction was also superbly natural and cinematic even in high brightness levels. We didn't notice any issues with any floating blacks or blockiness in the darkest regions of the image, even when using low bitrate content, it was very well behaved and most artefacts with that type of content were few and far between, and not overly visible from normal viewing distances. Feed the C3 a quality 4K HDR master and you are rewarded with stunning detail, depth and realism from its HDR capabilities. So. Is the picture performance exactly the same as the C2, or does the C3 offer something new for this year? We're about to show you some side-by-side -side comparison shots on video, but bear in mind that these are not representatives of what I can see in person right here, and the images you're going to see are captured by a camera which has a restricted dynamic range, and it's then compressed and edited, and then uploaded to YouTube, and then further compressed and changed by YouTube before you then see the content on your display, which is probably not calibrated either. So you may have to listen to what I say here and look at the pictures, but don't read too much into it. There really isn't much in the comparison between the C2 and the C3 for the vast majority of our testing, we saw no difference in image quality. Both were set to the out of the box filmmaker mode for SDR and HDR content, and this was through an HDR10 compatible splitter. There was a slight difference in the tone mapping on the LG C3 with the new A9 Gen 6 processor applying a little more brightness and dynamic range in the image, and some scenes you could just make out a little bit of a difference, but it wasn't huge. With the vast majority of our testing, the differences were just not that great and they were certainly not night and day. So the result, the C3 wins by a whisker, but it's not worth the difference in price point in my opinion. And what about the other competition? We had to use the 65 inch Samsung S95B that we own as the latest 2023 models are not yet available in the UK. Again, both these screens were set to the out of the box filmmaker mode. The main difference is the OLED technologies used, which means each has a slight difference in the colour of white. The Samsung QD OLED is magenta tint, and the LG WRGB panel has a cyan tint. This is very noticeable when side by side, and a result of how the technologies then create an image. 
This does carry through into how the images look in comparison, with the LG looking cool and the Samsung appearing to be warmer in colour tone and whites. Skin tones look similar with the Samsung just looking a smudge too red. Blacks are stronger on the LG due to the use of a better screen filter and the Samsung looks slightly grey when there's some ambient light present in the room. The C3 has the better image processing and upscaling with motion looking just that little bit better in comparison to the S95B but the margins really are tight. There's also a slight uptick for the Samsung with colour reproduction in brighter scenes but again this is not a night and day difference that some commentators on YouTube would have you believe. So for the result it's probably fair to call it a draw. For colour reproduction and white point the Samsung looks a whisker better but for everything else including blacks, image processing and motion the LG edges it. But the Samsung S95B is significantly cheaper at this point in time being an outgoing 2022 model. Next, we had to move the sets around, so the C3 flips to the other side of the screen because we're now using the Sony A84L or A80L against the LG C3 and it has much wider feet, which didn't quite fit uh, the way we wanted it on screen. For this testing, we used the custom mode on the Sony and filmmaker mode on the LG C3. These two are certainly major rivals on paper and as soon as we started testing it was obvious to see the Sony image manipulation and differing white point in custom mode made it stand out from an accurate image like filmmaker mode. Whites actually looked better on the LG with more natural skin tones and natural colours. Otherwise both offer very similar picture processing with LG really closing the gap on what was once a Sony stronghold. Indeed, we saw nothing that the Sony was doing that the LG just didn't match for upscaling and motion. So moving on to the result, once you add in that the LG C3 has better connectivity for gaming, more accurate out-of-the-box image quality, brighter and more punchy HDR10 performance, and video processing which now pushes the Sony, we have to say that the C3 would be our choice, and it will ultimately be cheaper in the next few months as Sony prices tend to stay artificially high. So let's wrap this up. If you want more detail and you want to get stuck into all the tests and everything else, then head over to AV Forums and read our in-depth review of the LG C3. Once again, the C series model in the LG lineup offers excellent all-round performance and a good mix of features, picture quality, and gaming credentials. The C3 continues what's gone before and the upgrade from the C2 model is not huge, but then why fix something that wasn't really broken? There is slightly more brightness on offer thanks to the Alpha 9 Gen 6 chip. Like last year, the video processing is now some of the best on the market for upscaling detail, smooth gradation and motion. But if you don't need the slight increase in brightness, the slightly better processing or the newly designed webOS and quick menus, you could pick up the 2022 C2, which is almost identical performance-wise, for close to £1,200 less at the time of this video review in May 2023, comparing 65-inch screen sizes. We've no doubt that the C3 pricing will also follow the same course over the year that the C2 has, so the choice, as they say, is yours. If you've enjoyed this review, then please do leave it a like. And if you want to see more TV reviews from AV Forums, including our thoughts on the 2023 flagship models, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.